Headshot, Spency boy, you know the aim. I can just already see those MX Bikes fanboys heads literally exploding right now. Okay, so let's get into this whole, you know, is MX Bikes more realistic? Is MX Simulator more realistic? This is a really complex argument, and I just want to get across my points of why I think certain individuals sort of go down this road of thinking that MX Bikes is so much more realistic than MX Simulator. And, you know, to remind everybody, I'm not saying you can't have that opinion. That's totally fine if that's your opinion. But what I am going to get into in this video is a few different things that I really think sort of sways and persuades people's opinions down that road when in reality, that's not really necessarily the case, okay? So, let's get this right off the bat, okay? MX Simulator came out almost a decade before MX Bikes, and technically MX Bikes is still in quote-unquote beta stage, right? But let's just, you know, let's keep it even here, let's I mean, in all reality, MX Simulator was in beta stage from like 2007 to 2010. So, you know, but anyways, point being is MX Bikes came out basically a decade after MX Simulator. Completely different graphical engine, okay? MX Bikes has a whole different kind of graphical look to it. I think that's one reason why a lot of people think that MX Bikes, you know, feels looks more realistic than MX Simulator is simply just the graphics. I mean, that's a simple right off the bat. And, and I'm not saying that's everything to it. We're going to get into some more points here that's going to make a little more, you know, physical sense to you. But when you just talk about graphical, I mean, it makes a big difference, man. Especially like you get these newcomers that are just getting into the, the dirt bike simulator world, you know. And for them, when they don't have a lot of time into the actual physical feeling of the bike, I think it's very easy for them to just take a quick glance at the graphics of MX Bikes and then the graphics of MX Simulator and then just automatically get that assumption that MX Bikes is so much more realistic than MX Simulator, right? Just straight off the bat, just from a visual graphical standpoint. It really does make a difference because... All of it kind of plays into that overall immersion into the game, okay? But it's not really at fault of MX Simulator because it came out a decade before MX Bikes did. MX Simulator came out in 2007. I know a lot of people don't even realize that because it's hard to believe a game from 2007 is still as relevant and played and all that, and, you know, community around it and everything like MX Simulator has. A lot of games just simply don't last that long and so um, but you know a lot of people will go look at like some gameplay on the stock tracks of MX Simulator you know with like the, the stock bike model and stock skin and um, you know the, the really old tracks that were literally made back in 2007 for the game those really old stock tracks I feel like it's really easy for a lot of people to you know look up MX Simulator and that's the first thing they see so then they're like, what the hell are these Minecraft level graphics, right? And so that alone, I think, and like I'm saying, let's just look at it this way, okay? Let's just say you reverse the roles here, okay? You gave MX Simulator the more modern graphical engine, better graphics and all that kind of stuff. The I think it's Unreal Engine that MX Bikes is using. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure. Let's just say you gave MX Simulator that graphical engine and then you gave MX Bikes the 2007 old school graphical engine. I fucking promise you, there wouldn't be nowhere near as many people saying that MX Bikes is more realistic than MX Simulator. Guarantee you. Okay, so... We got the graphical thing out of the way. That's just one little thing, okay? I think another big thing is the fact that you can't turn the camera setting to where it's not locked to the bike on MX Simulator. 
This is a really big one right here that I think a lot of people don't realize, okay? So with MX Simulator, it basically forces you to have the lock to the bike camera on it, whereas when you go to MX Bikes, you have the option of turning that off or on. And it, this makes such a drastic difference in so many different ways, but one of the biggest ways is whenever you're whipping the bike in the air, on MX bikes, if you have it turned, if you have it where it's not locked to the bike, what it'll basically do is the bike will whip in front of you, but the camera will still be facing forward, right? Whereas on MX simulator, with it being still locked to the bike, whenever you throw a whip, your camera, your first person camera basically follows the front fender when it turns over. And to be completely honest with you, if you've ever really whipped a dirt bike in real life, your vision stays more straight when you're throwing a whip in real life because you're trying to look ahead. You're trying to look at where you're landing. So I think you get a little bit more of a realistic camera view with the not locked to the bike camera setting on, on MX bikes, just in the sense of, you know, it's not constantly following directly in that front fender where that front fender is facing. You understand what I'm saying? Um, like in real life, when you throw those big whips, I mean, yeah, sometimes people kind of look over at their back fender or, you know, whatever. But in all reality, your vision is staying more straight and you're kind of whipping the bike underneath you, right? Um, so I feel like in that case, it, you know, it kind of gives people the impression that MX Bikes has a little bit more of that realistic whipping when in reality, it's more of a camera setting. Do you understand what I'm saying? For instance, if you could play MX Simulator where it wasn't locked to the bike, right, and you threw a whip, but the camera was still facing forward and the bike was just kind of whipping underneath you, I think there would be so many more people that would be saying MX Simulator actually feels or looks more realistic than MX Bikes. And it's not just the whips where this affects that. It's also in the cornering, right? Like, whenever you have it not locked to the bike on MX Bikes and you start going through a corner, it really it really makes that bike do that, that natural kind of moving separate from the actual, you know, first-person camera itself, right? And I think that really, it, it just gives you more of that vision of, like, in real life when, when the you know, your head is not going to be literally always 100% glued on where that front fender is going. And I think that's where a lot of people, especially when they first get into MX bikes and they turn the camera to not lock to the bike, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so realistic because they've never even felt that sort of not locked to the bike camera setting on MX Simulator, right? They've never even felt what that would look like on MX Simulator. So I feel like it gives them this almost like illusion in a sense that the feeling and physics of MX bikes is more realistic than MX simulator. But in reality, a large portion of that is really just in how you're viewing it and how you're seeing it. You know, with MX simulator, if you were able to have that not locked to the bike camera setting, you know, the more modern graphical engine, better graphics, I'm telling you, there wouldn't be not even close as many to as many people saying that, you know, MX bikes is so m much more realistic than MX simulator. That's what I'm saying. You got to be able to differentiate that f actual physics feeling from the camera settings and the way you're perceiving everything and the lock to the bike, not lock to the bike camera options and the graphics. And, you know, when you're really trying to look at the feeling and the physics of MX simulator, you kind of have to look past all those different things. And that can be very difficult, especially for, you know, a lot of people just getting into the, the dirt bike simulator genre. I feel like that can be a very hard thing to do. Um, and that kind of segues into this other little thing with MX bikes, with it being, with it being more arcadey of a feeling and easier to get into for the beginner player, I feel like what happens is 
You get a lot of guys that can kind of get into MX bikes a lot easier than they could MX Simulator, right? So then they get into MX bikes, they start getting more feeling out of the bike because they can actually hold the bike up easier. And then it gets to that kind of point where they can actually progress further on MX bikes than they could on MX Simulator because they start hitting all these rock walls trying to progress on MX Simulator and they never even get like the feeling of the bike and the and the actual you know setup of it and everything they never get far enough into MX simulator to fully experience the the feeling of the bike whenever you get it loose enough on MX simulator right um, I just think there's a lot of different elements that goes into it again you can still have your own opinion. You can still think that MX Bikes feels more realistic than MX Simulator. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying these are these are undeniable elements that automatically lead new players down the road of thinking that MX Bikes is more realistic than MX Simulator. It's just undeniable. I mean, and what I'm getting at is it doesn't mean that for a fact. You see what I'm saying? Um, like, you know, everybody's got their own opinion on it. Some people think that, you know, Alive is more realistic than Reflex. Some people think that MX vs. ADV Supercross is more realistic than this or that. Um, heck, when you go to the Milestone games, this is a good example of how graphics can kind of trick your mind. A lot of people think those Milestone games feel super realistic when they're literally the furthest thing from that. But, you know, um, people definitely... It doesn't take a lot for somebody to to feel a certain way about something with, with just certain elements of it, you know? And I think a lot of you guys, you got into real-life motocross at a really young age. You learned how to ride a real-life dirt bike at a really young age. And so at this point, you, you remember it in a way of being way easier than it really was, right? I think there's a lot of people that do that. They, they think back to when they first learned a real-life dirt bike when they were fucking four years old or three, and their, their mom or dad was literally sitting there, you know, carrying them while they were riding, and they don't really remember how hard it actually was, right? That's a totally different element than hopping into a new dirt bike simulator and trying to actually ride a big bike you know a 250 or a 450 for the first time ever like you actually experience these simulators you know what i'm saying and that's where i feel like i have a little bit more direct experience in real life because the first dirt bike i ever learned how to ride was a crf 230 Okay, so it was a bigger bike, but just didn't have quite the power. It was more of a street and trail style bike. But that was the first bike I learned how to ride. And then very quickly after that, I got a YZ125. And that was my first real race bike and all that. But, but that's how I learned how to ride a dirt bike, was on a big bike when I was older, right? And actually could remember and understand how hard it was and how you know, going through all that process. I feel like a lot of you boys, you already had a lot of that experience and knowledge from going from a 50 to a 60 to an 85, you know what I mean? So you already had all that base of experience. So then when you play a game like MX Bikes and with how much easier it is to get into it and learn the game, you think, oh yeah, this is kind of like more like real life. And MX Simulator is like too hard or too punishing. When in reality, I feel like with how punishing and hard MX Simulator is that's really more akin to how hard learning a real life dirt bike is when you try to go in there and you know your first time ever riding a real dirt bike is on a on a 250f or a 450 like you do in these simulators you know it's not an easy process dog and just simple things like trying to learn how to wheelie the bike or trying to learn how to you know huck the bike and do a triple out of a corner or hit a big whoop section or whatever the case may be i mean all those things learning those processes in real life is not easy it is a very difficult thing like if you want to actually master riding a wheelie on a dirt bike in real life it's going to take you months and months and months and months of doing it every single day for hours on end before you even think about being able to quote unquote master it 
And then, you know, th then that's completely different than getting into actually being able to skim a real Supercross whoop section in real life. Oh my God, bro. I rode on some arena cross track whoops and they were no joke, bro. I was getting around the rest of the arena cross track, like the rhythm sections and the, the big ass finish line where you'd fucking literally rack your sack coming up short on it. Um, you know, I got around, I could get around the rest of it, you know, somewhat decently, but when it came to the whoop section, oh my God, that's where you're, you're going to get humbled really quick when it comes to thinking you're more than an average rider in real life and you're really not, you know what I mean? You, you know, there's a lot of average riders that can get around an arena cross track. They can jump the finish line. They can double, double, double the rhythms. They can do shit like that. But you get to the whoop section, and that's literally a rock wall that you hit. Like, okay, this is going to be levels and levels trying to learn this shit at this point, you know. Then you get to a real super cross track, and it just expands that sort of difficulty and skill gap. And I feel like with, with how easy it is to get into MX Bikes in comparison to MX Simulator in those first stages of learning each one of those different kind of obstacles, it just seems easier than it should be on MX Bikes. I feel like MX Simulator is a lot more matching up to that very, very difficult to learn you know, supercross obstacles and things like that like real life actually is. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I, I just don't think MX Bikes is even in the even in the same like timeline of the learning curve of how learning a real life dirt bike really is. But like there's just certain little so many little things that I've felt with MX bikes that's so hard to explain, like on super rough tracks where I'm already literally wide open, 100% throttle down a straightaway or down a rough section or whatever. And it's just not flipping the bike over. It's just not doing anything. I'm not having to lean. I'm not having to like, oh shit, my ass in kicked out. Let me try to save it. It just doesn't do nowhere near that kind of actual physical reaction to the bike when you're going over roughness or whoops on MX bikes like it does on MX simulator. You know, it's going to take you a fucking long time to get to a point where you're just literally wide ass open throttle on a 450 going through roughness or, or hardcore whoops on MX simulator. It's going to take you way the hell longer to be able to get to that kind of point on MX simulator than it would MX bikes. And I've literally seen that from the, my own experience in both of the games. You can't change my mind on that. You can't, I've experienced it. I've, I've literally played both of the games and experienced that thing where it's like, Man, I mean, when I'm going over the roughness wide open on MX bikes, it's like, man, this I should be getting more feeling out of the bike. I should be getting more kicking forward and backwards or kicking to the side. And it just really doesn't do that. It just really doesn't do that. That's where that little bit more arcadey feeling comes into play with MX bikes. It just naturally keeps the bike more level for you than it does on MX Simulator. It just naturally kind of balances and holds the bike up more for you on MX bikes than it does MX Simulator. And uh hate to break it to you, but that's not how real life is, dog. That is not how real life is. If you hold a 450 wide open through roughness, and you're not literally a top 450 pro in real life, it's going to be kicking like a fucking mule all over the place, especially if you try to go through a whoop section. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I just don't think MX Bikes fully captures that, how hard it really is to go through these certain obstacles and hold the bike wide open and do all these different things, whip the bike over sideways. I just don't think it fully captures all those things with how long that I feel like it actually takes you to do that in real life and how, you know, how complicated it is to actually learn those different things in real life. Um, whereas I feel like MX Simulator more matches up that sort of road with the difficulty of MX Simulator, you know? Simulators are supposed to be brutal. They're supposed to be, like I say, a completely different dimension than an arcade game. They're supposed to not even feel even remotely the same. And that's where I feel like with MX Bikes, 
it fits somewhere in, like if you say, you know, let's just say Reflex is the most difficult skill gapped arcade motocross game out there, right? It's at the, the top of the pinnacle of arcade motocross games when it comes to difficulty and skill gap and realism, okay? And then let's say MX Simulator is, is you know, obviously higher than that on difficulty, skill gap, and realism. So, you know, you're, if you're sitting here th imagining a spectrum in your head, you know, Reflex is sitting way over here to the left, and MX Simulator is sitting way over here to the right, like way more difficult, way more skill gapped, way more realistic. Well, I feel like MX Bike sits somewhere in between, you know, Reflex and MX Simulator when it comes to the difficulty, skill gap, and realism. That's where I put MX Bikes. It's somewhere in between that spectrum between reflex and mx simulator you see what i'm saying so personally that's where i put mx bikes as far as all that it is what it is that's my opinion it's that's basically been my opinion on it from the very beginning when i very first played mx bikes and it's still my opinion on it to this day I really haven't changed up, man, when it comes to MX bikes. And I've experienced it in so many different ways, so many more ways. You know, I've went in there and done a lot of multiplayer races, different camera settings, different, I mean, just so much different shit. And I still have that opinion on it. That should go to tell you something right there. You know what I'm saying? It really should.